Hello, happy African Liberation Day. Asante sana to my Swahili family, Jambo, as we say, Bao to my Yoruba people, Kedu to my Igbo people, Awana, I will say, my Mende people from Sierra Leone, and Sawobona for my Zulu people from South Africa. Hello to everyone. My name is Stephen Rogers, the Executive Director for Africa Faith and Justice Network. Today is May 25, Africa Liberation Day. Now, what does that even mean? Historically, 59 years ago, the Af Organization of African Union was formed. But symbolically, this day has come to represent the triumph of Africa's struggle against coloniality. And perhaps more importantly, it has come to also represent the promise of Africa. As Africans celebrate all around the world at this particular day, let us remember each year that this moment is a period of reflection and a reminder of who we are as a people and what it means to be African. Because Africa is more than just a continent. It is more than how we look, more than the different languages that we speak. It is, it is more about being an African is a way of life. It's about our interconnectedness about our rich tapestry of culture, of diversity, and ingenuity. Over the past six decades, since African countries had gained independence, most of the news surrounding our continent has actually been about disease, poverty, conflict, corruption, refugees, natural disasters. Now, why these are some of our realities, they are not our only realities. Our realities are also stories of resilience, stories of innovations, stories of triumph, stories of resourcefulness. They are stories of ingenuity and yes, stories of success. As someone who has lived in Africa for most of my life, I have seen enormous resourcefulness among our people. In 2019, for instance, I watched when Kenya's Peter Tabichi was named UNESCO's worst best teacher. In Liberia, a young activist and environmentalist, Joseph Bramwell, single-handedly stopped the destruction of more than 500,000 acres of forests, rainforests, by a multinational company. In South Africa, our local scientists discovered the latest strain of coronavirus, saving millions of lives around the globe. Now, these are also the stories of Africa. But even beyond these individual success stories, we have also seen the rise of more democratic and accountable governments in places like Botswana and Ghana. We have seen the implementation of better economic policies in Africa. We have also seen the spread of new technologies promoting political accountability and creating fresh business opportunities. And we have witnessed the emergence of a new generation of policymakers, activists, and business leaders. This new generation is smart, they're energetic, and entrepreneurial with a global outlook. And yes, these are our stories. These are the stories of Africa. But we cannot relent. We have to do more to prevent other problems like land grabbing, environmental injustice, corruption, illicit financial flow, and you name it. That is why we here at African Faith and Justice Network, we believe in the promise of Africa. That's why we are taking action. And through our advocacy here in Washington, D.C., and our educational programs on the continent, we are working hard for favorable U.S. policies towards Africa. We know that, for instance, to end COVID-19 globally, Africa must be at the center of that strategy. That is why we are asking the U.S. and other leading nations to provide more special drawing rights to counter the financial and economic impacts of COVID. That is why we are asking for intellectual property right waivers for African countries with technology, such as South Africa, for instance, to manufacture their own medicines to treat COVID-19, and so many other things. So therefore, on this African day, let us take action. Be an activist. Report corruption. Do not pay bribe. 
make an impact, be the change that you want to be. That is the promise of Africa.